guinea pig taming rules. There's a lot of videos out there that have guinea pig taming techniques, but here are the guinea pig taming rules. Scott here, Scotty's Animals. I'm a volunteer at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue, and I've got a free guinea pig care guide on my website, scottysanimals.com. If you like guinea pig care videos or taming videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you won't miss a video. Also on my website, there's a link to my Patreon, and if you wanted to support my rescue and education efforts, check it out and see if there are some rewards that you'd be interested in. They include patron-only videos, access to a patron-only live feed, discounts on my Etsy shop, and a lot more, so check it out. And of course, you can always contact me on my contact page on my website. Okay, let's get into the video. What are the guinea pig taming rules? Well, number one, always bring treats. <laughs> now, if you are just trying to grab your piggy and hold them and give them scratches or whatever, but you don't bring treats, then of course they're going to be weary. They're gonna be like, what's this person doing? I think they're going to grab me. But if they know that treats are coming, and they're going to be waiting for them and they're going to greet me. Hey guys, who wants treats? Here you go. Here you go, Nate. Here, Gary. You want that one? Hey, Popeye. What are you boys doing under there? Come on. Hey, look, it's Pippi. Come here, Pipsqueak. Come on. Come out of the tunnel. Come out of the tunnel, baby. Got him. I got him. Here we go, boys. Here. So rule number one is always bring treats. If you bring treats, your piggies will come out and greet you, and if you don't, they'll be mad. So what is the second of the guinea pig taming rules? Well, just because you bring treats, you still want to greet them either by weaking and squeaking and whistling or or talking to them like a baby or just announcing your presence in some way. You want to greet them based on what's going on. So if you're bringing them treats, you can go, you know, or you can say, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, or however you choose to greet them. You could, you know, you might have this whole like, or something like that. The clicking, you wanna be careful because that might sound like the tooth chattering. I think I got your fur up my nose, Pipsqueak. And hey, if you want to learn how to speak guinea pig, <laughs> I have a video right here that's actually called How to Speak Guinea Pig. It talks about some of the more subtle sounds and how to make them. All right. So let's talk about the third rule for taming your guinea pig, and that would be the cage. Now the size and the type of cage really matters, and it can make or break your relationship. It can either build a bond of trust, or it can help set up, you know, and re reinforce the fear that, that they're afraid of you. If you have one of those pet store cages that have a little opening and you have to reach your hands in there every time to grab them, that really frightens them. Also, in general, a small cage, you'll end up, your hands, they feel like they don't have a safe place to hide. And in general, regardless of taming or not, you, the minimum cage size that we recommend for a pair of guinea pigs is eight square feet. So that would be a two by three because these grids are 14 inches each. But 
a minimum of two by three, more is always better. On my website in the free guinea pig care guide, the first section talks about how to set up a cage. So I show you the types of grids I recommend and how to set up a, a CNC cage. But I also recommend the Midwest and I have a couple videos detailing how to care for the Midwest, how to set it up, even how to wash the canvas. So check it out. But those pet store cages, Pippi, what are you doing? Uh-oh, you ran out of lettuce. Oh no. See, now you got everybody upset. But definitely, I don't recommend the pet store cages. They are fine for a carrier to, to and from the vet, but they are not appropriate for actually living in. Now, just because you say, oh, well, my guinea pig lives alone, so they don't need a big cage, they, they're fine in a smaller cage. That actually brings me to number four, the fourth rule when it comes to taming your guinea pigs and also just providing them with the adequate care and, and a wonderful life, that means that they shouldn't live alone. And for guinea pigs, it's safety in numbers. Guinea pigs are herd animals and they'll be shyer when they're alone. They'll be more timid and if they have a friend or they live in a small herd, they're going to be more outgoing and they're gonna become tamer, they're gonna trust you because they see that the other piggies are trusting you. And also in a big herd, if you do put your hawk talons in, you know, they're thinking, oh, there's safety in numbers and oh, get, get, get her, not me. <laughs> but if you talk to your piggies and you bring them treats and they're well adjusted and they're, they're, they're not like living alone and feeling all weird, then they will come up to you. You don't want to, you want to squirm unless you have treats, huh? Here. Well, we better finish, finish this list before he finishes his lettuce. I don't want to get, I don't want him getting soft poops. So too much, too much fresh veggies can give your piggy soft poops. So you always want to go in moderation, but this is a special treat since he's the star. Now let's talk about cage placement. Number five for guinea pig taming rules is the placement of the cage matters. Now, if you've got your piggy up on a table in the middle of a common room or a, 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 an area that has high traffic and where people are going to be there coming and going or just sitting and interacting with the piggies, then that's going to go a long way to make them feel comfortable, outgoing, and, and tame and they're gonna be comfortable with you, they're gonna be comfortable with noises. If you've got your piggies in a bedroom or shoved in a corner, now if you've got them on the floor, and like I said, if you've got them in one of these small pet store cages, or maybe they're under some furniture or something, you're going to ignore them, you're going to neglect them, they're just not going to be in the middle of a flow of traffic, they're not gonna get as much stimulation and of course interaction than they would you know even if even if if you had your piggies in the center of where everything's going on just you walk by and you scratch their nose that goes a long way to making them feel comfortable with you but if you only ever approach the cage and it was a small pet store cage on the floor and the only time you ever approach it you're chasing your piggy around for a few minutes you're just reinforcing that fear and so if you're carrying on in your life, you're chopping veggies that are meant for you, they're meant for you, <laughs> and your piggies are like, ah, wow, wow, he's cooking, he's cooking, bring me something, you know, then you will have some really outgoing, fun piggies. And Pipsqueak, you might have noticed in some of my videos, since I put this thing, this ramp up for him, this uh, racetrack, he's really running and jumping and, and, you know, he's really coming into his own. And he's being a lot more trusting of me because he's got more uh, freedom and space. I got so much of your hair up my nose, Pipsqueak. <laughs> so really consider the placement of your cage, whether or not it's up on a table and whether it's in a high traffic area. Now you don't want it to be like in the middle of the kitchen or in the middle of the place where you're always uh, wrestling on the floor or, or, or playing, you know, catch or, or you know, you really want to make sure that it's someplace where they are safe, safe from pets, safe from accidents, but 
a centrally located place where you can interact with them multiple times a day, that's going to be what you really want if you want to tame your piggies. So the last guinea pig taming rule, number six, is have patience. You know, it's going to take time to build their trust and you're going to have to put the effort in to build a relationship with them. And there's not just some easy way where you can snap your fingers and you've tamed them because even if there were you wouldn't have earned it you wouldn't have really built that relationship and that relationship is built on all of the positive interactions that you have with them if you use these techniques and you're patient and you give your piggies the care they deserve and the attention that they need you'll be surprised how fast they open up to you and how tame they really can be and you don't need to adopt a baby any piggy at any age can become tame and trusting of you it's just a matter of you putting in the effort but as far as time goes you will be so surprised at how quickly it seems like they do open up to you and remember guinea pigs are individual personalities so it may take some piggies more time to trust you and you never know what has happened to them in the past so be patient and and love them unconditionally and that should be a reward in itself but when they do start to trust you and they do start to be tame it's such a great feeling and such a great reward but just saving these guys and giving them a good life is reward enough. Right, Pippi? And if you want to see the story about how I found Pipsqueak, then it's right here. Whoa! Mm. What happened? What happened? I was just pointing to the story. Well, luckily the lettuce fell, but you didn't. Oh my goodness. That's why you always gotta hold your piggies firmly. My goodness, Pipsqueak. Huh. <sighs> so those are the guinea pig taming rules. I got a whole playlist of techniques and videos that are gonna sh show you in depth how to tame your piggies. And you'll see before you know it, they'll be eaten out of the palm of your hand, literally. All right, thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Did I miss a taming technique that's really worked for you? Let me know in the comments. All right, see you there.